everybody, it's your boy Zito back in the business. And we are here at uh, Galacticon once again, but this time we in Colombia. So we just like like last time we sit here just gathering interviews, getting people to talk to, and just seeing what kind of interesting stuff we got. Let's uh, check us out things that we got there. I see a bunch of cosplays. And so far we got uh, ghost we got Ghostbusters cosplays. We got Star Wars, Thomas Wayne Batman. It's, not, it's a nice hotel, by the way, though. But it's we have a lot of fun on, though. So all in all, stay stay tuned because the interviews will be coming soon. It's kind of like a like a post-apocalyptic scenario. Exactly. Yes, it's kind of a dystopian book. Ready? Yes. Good. Good morning, afternoon, whenever you're watching this. My name is Zito from uh, Zito Broadcast. And we're interviewing uh, Miss Beth, Beth, Beth Martin, right? Yes, Beth Martin. Uh, Miss Beth Martin is here to promote her book, uh, In the Refuge, right? Yes. Right, um, what made you look? Um, what's this about? What's this book about? Who is this? Sorry. Yeah, it's um, kind of a dystopian story in uh, Fowler's Refuge, which is a bomb shelter underground. And, yeah, underground. And the people who live there have been trapped and isolated for over 20 years. So oh, yeah. the, the end is the bomb shelter is ending and the people have to find a way to get out. So, 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 so basically, it's like, it was post apocalyptic scenario. Yeah, I was influenced by like Fallout and stuff like that. Oh, you a gamer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What kind of game do you play? I'm sorry, you can't go off topic. What kind of game do you play, though? <laughs> I'm really bad at games, so usually I play with my husband, and we, uh, we really enjoy like RPGs and. Uh, and, and this was created based off one of the uh, Blizz's own Fallout series. Well, not the main one, but one of them. That's actually, that's actually kind of interesting. Though. I didn't, didn't expect. I didn't expect that. It's, it's just, it just goes to show that you can get inspiration from anywhere, though. Um, so, when did you start this? Oh gosh, um, I started it in March of 2014, and it took me about six weeks to write it, and then much, much longer to edit it. <laughs> Do you have a publisher already? Uh, no, this one's self-published. I'm actually not interested in working with a publisher at this time. Oh. My oh. Next, next book is coming out this October. Uh, you have a title for that? Yeah, it's called Quality DNA. Quality oh, DNA? That, that's not like some science, that's like, like science, science fiction type thing. Oh, yeah, I love sci-fi. Uh, quick, quick rundown, what would that be about? Uh, that was basically like a future society where everyone's DNA is cataloged in like a genome database. That sounds like either a show or a video game I play. I just can't pinpoint where it's coming from. <laughs> that actually sounds interesting. If I, if I come across that, I would actually pick it up. That sounds like a total breeze. Yeah. Um, where, where do you see this going in the long run? Um, hopefully in the long run, I'll be doing this full time. Uh, and going to more conventions like this and uh, meeting, meeting more people. I hope I hope to run across these books. I wouldn't mind coming across uh, re reading one of your books, especially the second one. That actually sounds yeah. so interesting, though. I'm at, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, it has like a, it has like a science fiction feel, and it's it, 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 it's something I can I can kind of see being a movie. <laughs> yeah, it's if very it, sci-fi. If, if that does become a movie, I'm buying a ticket. I'm going there. I'm going there because I actually would not mind seeing that though. And how old are you? Uh, I'm, I'm 31. Yeah, got this is people. like my, my second career. She got me by, <laughs> what, three, three, four years? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, 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 I'll be 28 next year. All right. Well, but, happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but um, other than that, though, I think it's, it's about it. I'm actually, I, actually, I, actually look, I actually look forward to seeing where this, comes, where this goes in the future. I actually look forward to seeing you again and seeing your book blow up. And I actually look forward to reading the second book. He says it's called... Um, What's it called again? Quality DNA. Quality DNA. So we have the inner, ref inner refuge as well as uh, quality DNA. And whenever that comes out, I definitely, I definitely would like to pick it up and get a copy, especially, especially for reviewing purposes, though. Yeah. Yeah. And um, thank you, Miss Beth, Miss uh, Miss Martin, Miss Beth. <laughs> we, was, we hope to see you again, though. All right. Uh, and that be it. Oh, I actually, that actually went better than I expected. Hey. <laughs> this, this actually cool. Oh, I might as well give you this because, like I said, we're part of, we're part of the Empire. I like it.
first doing my research, like finding people that I found inspiration off of, like, and asking them where they got their stuff produced, right. like Vista Print or, you know, something like that. And then I actually draw the stuff digitally on my computer, making sure it's the right size and everything. Yeah. Because, yeah. Right, right, right. And I, yeah, then I just draw. Okay, that's nice. And in terms of your um, your drawing, because you're really your drawing has been nice, especially with the keys. <laughs> Thank you. And in terms of the plushies, and you explained to me early that you um, it's, it's based off the um, the kitsune. The kitsune. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, and then another thing is, it's like in terms of just the plushies, like how, how long does it take you to uh, make those plushies? Uh, well, I didn't actually like make them myself, but okay. I designed the character and then I got a prototype and I got multiple prototypes until it was finalized and the design was perfect. So that took a couple months because it took a month for like each prototype because they had to send it to me and then I had to send revisions and stuff like that. Oh wow! Um, and then I made a Kickstarter, so crowdfunding is key. Um, oh, okay. I made a Kickstarter to help fund the production of the minimum quantity, which was actually 300, but I got it for 150 because I did a little oh, so sneaky thing. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. But. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I did the funding for the 150, and then I sent that to them, and then it took them like two to three months to make the 150, and then they sent all those to me. Right, right. Yeah, so it took like half a year or something for the whole project, the whole thing. And it's worth it. It's really yeah, worth it's it. worth it. And it can sit, you're just mentioning um, that you mostly do digital art. Um, yeah. What type of programs do you use and uh, how long does it take you? I started off with Photoshop, like Adobe Photoshop Elements 10. Um, but now I use Paint Tool Sci, which is like, I don't know, like better for coloring and Pretty blending. Yeah. 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 Than Photoshop. And in terms of your work, um, do you, um, how do you... What do you think is going within the future of your works? Uh, well, I'm hoping after I've like sold or like got rid of <laughs> most of my old stuff because it's mostly old art. Uh -huh. um, I'm hoping to start making new art. I've actually started some now, but I haven't gotten them produced yet. I don't like prints or whatever. Okay. So I'm hoping like kind of start fresh with newer, more recent drawings and stuff. That's very wonderful. Really, I can't wait to see it. Thank you. And, and considering the fact that we're going to have an audience, um, you want to tell us um, people like where they can all find you? Okay. Uh, my Instagram <laughs> is official.sugar.m.spice. <laughs> Nice. Just dots in between the words. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think I have, I have a Facebook page that's Sugar and Spice Shop. So if you find that, good job. Alrighty. Okay, I believe that's about it. Like I said. The first time I did it, it took me about two hours. Right? <laughs> but with practice, over time, I got it down to about 60 seconds now. This, this, it was like a nine, this was like a nine and a half out of ten. It's not, it's not like my best one, <laughs> but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's just, it's just a little extra sharpness for the for, for table day. You know? Gotcha, it matches, gotcha. It matches my, matches my swag. <laughs> so we're back with our old friend Dex, and he's actually uh, showing how the game is played. Demonstration going on as we speak. Somebody just lost a $500 hand to blackjack, and it made me smile. <laughs> wow. Wow. $500. I would be so mad if I lost that much money. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, well, you know, not everybody's got it like that, though. You know what I mean? I mean, if you, the way I see it, if you have $500 to bet on a hand of blackjack, you're doing all right. Yeah. What's going on? Change. Oh, change. For 100 what do we need? 50 Somewhat complicated what? setup. Okay, I'm pretty sure the game is just as, just as somewhat complicated as it looks. It looks like there's a lot going on. What I like to tell people is this game is exactly as complicated as you want it to be. 
Even, so, everything is optional, wow. even movement itself. So if you're happy with where you are on the board and where your people are on the board and you don't want to do anything on a turn, then you don't have to do anything on a turn. Fair it's very, yeah, it's very easy. I actually, not, not that long ago, I had one fellow play this game. Everybody starts in the casino. I had one dude who never okay. left the casino. <laughs> oh all my all God. he wanted to do was try and win money playing blackjack. So every turn came around, he was just like, bet me, bet me, bet me. And oh my God. This is a true story. He almost won. He almost won. He got second place. I mean, I, right. I was pulling for him just because it's a cool story. But he almost won. What happened then? Well, what happened? Well, I don't know. He somebody else just wound up with more money. You know what I mean? Like he, he did. He did gotcha. good. Ultimately, this is all about money. It's about crime, gambling, and stabbing your friends in the back. When it's my turn, this is what's up. I'm gonna play blackjack now, and I'm gonna put one of my own silvers out there. It's five hundred dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Five, this is five hundred dollars. I'm gonna bet it right now because I got it like that. <laughs> So, I'm gonna play. we take our, you in? Yeah. You in, we got two players now. All right. How much is this? That's $100, that's, that's chump change. $200. $200, that's weak. $200, <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's okay though. You know, to each his own. Yeah. She's still staying a little bit because she lost that 500 earlier. So now, yeah, she's, she's dialing it back a notch now, you understand? All right, so, this is how we deal with You wanna cut that, make sure it's all on the level? Yes. I don't wanna get, I want nobody accusing me of cheating. All right, we gotta cut. $200 bet. Do that first. We got one up there. We got one up there. One down in the dealer. We got one up there. We got one up there. We got one up in the dealer. Dealer's looking at a queen. Let's make sure it's not a blackjack. It's not a blackjack. Nice. Nate's going to play first. Nate's going to take a hit because obviously 15, 15 is going to take a hit. And I just lost $500 just like that. That's how wow. I I've lost myself $500. We're going to move over to the lady. What do you want to do with the nine, madam? We're going to hit the nine. We're going to, we're going to tap the nine. She was like, she was like <laughs> Most people are like, hit me. Deal. Yeah. yeah. She was like, no, I'm gonna take a soft one. Okay. That's a 19. We're gonna call that a 19. We're gonna stay. We're gonna stand on the 19. So what's the dealer got? Dealer's looking at a 15. House rules are anything less than a 16. Well, 16 or less, house has to hit. Anything 17 or more, house has to stand. This is a 15. Obviously, that's less than 16. House has to take a card. That's a 17, so I gotta stand there, but 17 still loses to 19. I already lost because I went over 21. You get $200, I lose $500, and that's the way the ball rolls sometimes. Wow. That's, that's pretty much a quick summary of uh, Devil's Playground. Or, or Blackjack, yeah. Mostly that was Blackjack, but yeah, obviously that's a thing that happens in this world, so, you know, that's a way to make money. If you don't wanna, it's a, Playing blackjack in this game is a real good thing to do if you don't like dealing with people. Right. You know? Because normally the idea is to negotiate with people and squeeze money out of them any way that you can. Are you ain't trying to do with that? Yeah, blackjack. Right, right. That's exactly it. So I lose my five hunch. I gotta get the lady two hunch over here. And we're all paid up. Clean up the hand. What really stings about that is that that was my turn. <laughs> She just she just won two hundred dollars on my turn. Wow! And I lost five. That's the way that it goes. I'm happy with everybody. I'm happy with where everybody is though. Business is good. I still got my stripper working up in the club, so I'll leave her there, and I'm gonna be done. I did not get my two hundred dollars this time. Because see, the way it works is, if you got a stripper to strip club, when your turn comes around, it's 200 bonus dollars when the turn starts. Because you know she's making money. She's making money, and I take it from her. <laughs> And that'll be it's about, easy revenue. And that'll be about it. This is a quick summary of Devil's Playground. Most of the blackjack portion, though. Uh, this is Dex and I'm Zito. Well, you are. I can say Josh. Josh and Ma'am. Sorry. Now I call it, right? <laughs> no, no, wait. Wait a minute, that, that's not right. What, 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 Zito. Z Zito. Sorry, I met a Malachi earlier and it stuck in my head. So it's, it's such an unusual name. You have one too. Uh, we're back. Uh, it's your boy Zito and I'm talking to John. PLD uh, Comics. Yep. And we just uh, hit mo um, some of your stuff. So we you like, like show us. Okay, uh, we're PLD Comics. We're based out of the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Uh, we self-publish uh, three titles. We have The Fall, which is our shoot 'em up vigilante book, and the first issue just got sold out. It's going fast. Um, we have Gideon Sebastian, which is our buddy cop action comedy vampire book with no sparkling. We have the Halloween special, which is short spooky stories. Uh, we have prints, buttons, stickers, t-shirts. We are also going to be throwing our first ever uh, solo run convention by us. It is the Ocean City Comic Con. It's going to be December 9th in Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, it is a one-day con. You can bring the family down for the weekend. It is Ocean City in the off-season. 
So the rooms are cheap and affordable, and you don't have to deal with traffic of the tourists. So uh, yeah, we're hoping that'll be a good time. And uh, we've been doing this since about 2006. It's uh, me and my brother and our friend James, and we work with some great contributing artists, and uh, we love doing conventions like this. What inspired the, um, the cards themselves? Okay, so uh, so The Fall is, is a vigilante book, um, and it's just, uh, we decided early on we didn't want to do superhero books. Uh, we all like superhero books, we grew up with them, um, but we wanted to do something more adult and kind of gritty and kind of violent and stuff. Um, so The Fall is, is that guy, and basically he, uh, we're never going to reveal his identity. He's meant to be a personification of justice. So he could be relatable to anybody. He could be your neighbor, your brother, your uncle, your friend, whatever. So, so as far as people know, he's just a random guy. He's a random dude in a mask, blowing away bad guys. Um, so, uh, these guys, uh, Gideon and Sebastian, this is a, uh, he's a priest for the Catholic Church. Sebastian is a vampire, and they hunt vampires for the Catholic Church. So they do a lot of globe hopping. It's kind of like James Bond, like, you know, they're, they're in Madrid, they're in Alaska, they're all over the place. Um, it's very kind of buddy cop, red partee kind of stuff. Um, the Halloween book, we wanted to do some offbeat, kind of otherworldly things. So we have a guy, uh, John Swamp Dude, he lives on another planet, Nate Swamp, Zero. Um, we have like kind of spooky supernatural stories. Um, but again, they're all kind of on the darker, gritty side. We did one kid's book, and it doubles as a activity book, word finds and whatnot. But it's about a talking jellyfish and his friend who's a chef. It's the only book we have that is a chock full of violence and profanity. Because, um, you know, our, our fans have kids and they're like, hey man, you're killing me. I got nothing to buy for my kids, you know? So, so you have one, you have one for the adults. One kid's book. One, one kid's book. One kid's book and very much for adults. Yep. The kids, and the kid's book, you have to have a talking jellyfish that doesn't cost anything. Yes, it doesn't cost nothing. No violence. But so the adult books, guys, everything you can possibly think of. Yeah, it's more, almost. Because I'm, 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 I, I know, I, I know there's some having stuff that I didn't hear, so I'm pretty sure you're probably trying to stay with me. You know, um, the, the thing is, uh, there, there's there's no real sex for nudity. There's a little bit of scantily cladism because it is comic books. But I found that people are totally cool with somebody getting their heart ripped out. But you know, you Not start showing cool. nudity, and it's like, oh my god, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's, that that seems to be a thing a lot. That's yeah, kind of weird, but. It's the, like way, it. it's the way of the world, you know, it's, I, I want to sell the books, so, you know, porno books are great too, people make them, I just, so right you know, now these, just, these are violent. That's right, right now you're selling hyper-violence, which sells like a hot cake, and the kids love. People love it, you know, they do. So, so um, you say you've been doing this since what, 2005? Uh, 2006. 2006, yep. 2006 and this is, you've been doing this for 11 years. Yep, 11 years, yep. Uh, what made you um, want to start doing this? Uh, I wanted to be a comic book artist since I was about four years old. And when my brother was old enough to be four years old, he wanted to do it too. Because he saw me doing it. And I just, I've been drawing since then. Are you and, are you your brother like four years apart? Ah, uh, three years apart. Three years apart. Uh, yeah, math's wrong there. I'm not, I'm an odd mathematician. I'm an artist. <laughs> so. But, um. I mean, fair enough. Just big, I just big, I get out there real quick. Um, always wanted to do it though. So, <laughs> so where do you see this heading? You've been doing this for 11 years, what do you see this happening? Um, we are very fortunate in the fact that this has become a, a nice uh, side gig for us. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're not losing money hand over fist. We're not really making any money, but you know, um, it's the way the market is, it's never going to be a full time gig. It would be nice, and you know, maybe we'll get lucky someday, but I'm not banking on it. Right now, I'm just happy doing this. We have fun doing it. I mean, I at mean, the end of the day, we do stuff more for. Um, for passion instead of money, you actually enjoy it a lot more. Absolutely, of around. absolutely. And it's best to do stuff off of passion and make money off it, and do stuff for money and not have no passion for it. Because then you just start being frustrated, and then you just you just uh end up dropping it somewhere online. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Though. Thank you very much. And, thank uh, you. And, and, and again, check check out about Ocean City. It happens uh, uh, December 9th. December 9th. Yeah. Check about Ocean City, and I'll see y'all later. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened when your wife has this in your leg. I'm not going to kill me after that one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, what the book is, it's about a 1930s detective thrust forward into the far future of 2173 aboard a spaceship where he fights crime knowing nothing about spaceships. Which explains the robotic arm. I should ask how, how he got that, but that's kind of going into spoiler territory. It does go a little bit into spoiler territory, but he uses that arm to do his three favorite things. Which are? He solves his problems in his three favorite ways by punching things, shooting things, and drinking things. And he needs his hand to do all those things. Punching, shooting, and drinking. How is drinking the thing it's up you so hard? But I want to solve my problems too, I do. Hey, it's each his own. <laughs> it's weird, but it's interesting though. So, when did you start all this? Last year at university. And you know what you just thought about? Yeah, it's uh, once I put my mind to something. It's not my first run in the convention scene. I used to do a webcomic. Right. Um, but I started doing this because webcomics are hard to do at conventions because they're like, yeah. oh, it's free online. Yeah, it is kind of hard to do the especially if you don't have the stuff right there in front of them to propose. Exactly. Well, I, ha I had my books, and it's like, oh, it's, it's a book, and it's free online. Right. So, but, yeah, most people can go for the free online. That makes sense. That makes so sense. now I'm trying this, trying this out. How's it working? It's been going pretty awesome. Like, people are really responding to it pretty well. It looks, it looks good. The art style actually looks good. I actually, I look, because I actually had a do of my wedding that stuff people wouldn't let me wear, so that's the thing. I digress. I, that's off topic. <laughs> anyway, so, Feature Best Detective, what gave you this inspiration? So, it was a little mix of things I was consuming at the time. You know, our media affects what we're pushing out. But I, what? I just played Fallout 4. I'm probably familiar with it. I'm familiar with it. And uh, Nick Valentine was my favorite character instantly. Uh, and he got me into reading more detective fiction. So I went and I read a bunch of Dash of Hamilton. He was the original hard boiled detective writer. And I went, this would be really cool in space. <laughs> I mean, you got a detective that's not in his timeline in space. I don't know how you can get much cooler than that. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it sounds interesting enough as it is. I'm pretty sure the proof, I, I, I actually have to read it and see how interesting it is. But just the idea of being a, of being a detective in space, not knowing what's going on, yeah, that might be interesting, confusing, horrifying, and possibly annoying. Oh, it is a little bit, especially because the police in the future don't exactly have the same code of ethics as the police in the past. Uh, no. You know, cops in the future don't want you roughing up witnesses. But in the 1930s, roughing up a witness is no big deal. That makes sense. So, he not, not, so not only is he dealing with yeah, um, a new environment, he's dealing with a different culture. A different culture. And, and, the, and the different way the law works now. Yep. So now he has to try and do his thing while avoiding really getting in trouble with the law. Exactly. And you're not a good detective if you can't adapt to your environment. That too. That too. So where do you see us going in the future? Uh, the next book is actually already written. This binder is the rough draft of the second book. Oh. So I'm currently editing it. You got red dots all over it. Basically spell check and make sure everything goes well, right? Yep. Uh, the way I usually edit it is I read it out loud to myself. And if it sounds good, good. If not, then you're like, okay, let me go back and see what I messed up in. Exactly. That, that's actually not a bad way to go about it. It, it does mean that my own personal grammar comes out, and my own personal grammar is not as good as, say, the English official Yeah. Grammar. That was a thing. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can see, yeah, I can see how that can be a problem, because then you're sitting like, uh, blah, 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 and you're saying one thing and it sounds different, like, no, that's not as good as it go. Let me try this again. But it is nice for a detective novel, because you have the detective talking a lot, and when a character's speaking, you want it to sound like, Right. That makes sense. Let me go with it find you Oh yeah, it's a... Uh, just look on Amazon for Stellar Detective Tales. It's right there. Oh, I'm at, I'm at you know, I may have to do I may have to look this up and actually do a review for this. I mean, you should. <laughs> I definitely should, though. But thank you for your time, though, Scott. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. That's why I'm going to be your wife to have in your leg. I'm not going to kill me after that line. Huh?
Alright, so what the book is, it's about a 1930s detective thrust forward into the far future of 2173 aboard a spaceship where he fights crime knowing nothing about spaceships. Which explains the robotic arm. I should ask how, how he got that, but that's probably going to spoiler territory. It does go a little bit into spoiler territory, but he uses that arm to do his three favorite things. Which are? He solves his problems in his three favorite ways by punching things, shooting things, and drinking things. And he needs his hand to do all those things. Punching, shooting, and drinking. How is it that you tell you solve crime? But I want to solve my problems tonight. Hey, it's weird, but it's interesting, though. So, when did you start all this? Okay, last year at University of Over. Did you just start all Yeah, that's uh, once I put my mind to something. It's not my first run in the convention scene. I used to do a webcomic. Right. Um, but I started doing this because webcomics are hard to do at conventions because they're like, yeah. well, it's free online. Yeah, it is kind of hard to do the business, but if you don't have the stuff right there in front of them, to propose. Exactly. Well, I had, I had my books, and it's like, oh, it's, it's a book, and it's free online. Right. So, but, yeah, most people can go for the free online. That makes sense. That makes so sense. now I'm trying this, trying this out. How's it working? It's been going pretty awesome. Like, people are really responding to it pretty well. It looks, it looks good. The all style actually looks good. I actually, look, because I actually had up a duel with my wedding that stuff that people wouldn't let me wear, so that's the thing. I digress, I, that's off topic. <laughs> anyway, so, Futurist Detective, what gave you this inspiration? So, it was a little mix of things I was consuming at the time, you know, our media affects what we're pushing out. But I, what? I just played Fallout 4, and you're probably familiar with it. I'm familiar with it. And uh, Nick Valentine was my favorite character instantly. Uh, and he got me into reading more detective fiction. So I went and I read a bunch of Dash of Hamilton. He was the original hard boiled detective writer. And I went, this would be really cool in space. <laughs> I mean, you got a detective that's not in his timeline in space. I don't know how you can get much cooler than that. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it sounds interesting enough as it is. I'm pretty sure the proof, I, I, I would actually have to read it and see how interesting it is. But just the idea of being a, a being a detective in space, not knowing what's going on, yeah, that might be interesting, confusing, horrifying, and possibly no. Oh, it is a little bit, especially because the police in the future don't exactly have the same code of ethics as the police in the past. Uh, no. You know, cops in the future don't want you roughing up witnesses. But the nineteen thirties, roughing up a witness is no big deal. That makes sense. So he not, not so not only is dealing with um, a new environment, he's dealing with a different culture, a different culture, and and the, and different way the law works now. So now he has to try and do his thing while avoiding really getting in trouble with the law. Exactly. And you're not a good detective if you can't adapt to your environment. That too. That too. So where do you see it going in the future? Uh, the next book is actually already written. This binder is the rough draft of the second book. Oh. So I'm currently editing it. You got red dots all over it. Basically so it it spell check and make sure everything goes well, right? Yep. Uh, the way I usually edit it is I read it out loud to myself. And if it sounds good, yeah. If not, then you're like, okay, let me go back and see what I messed up in. Exactly. That, that's actually not a bad way to go about it. It, it does mean that my own personal grammar comes out. And my own personal grammar is not as good as, say, the English. Yeah. That was the thing. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can see. Yeah, I can see how that could be a problem. Cause then you're sitting like, uh, blah blah blah, and you're saying one thing and it sounds different. Like, no, that's not as good as it go. Let me try this again. But it is nice for a detective novel because you have the detective talking a lot, and when a character's speaking, you want it to sound like. Right. That makes sense. Like the shots of my mom. Let me go with it right away. Oh yeah, it's a. Uh, just look on Amazon for Stellar Detective Tales. Right there. I'm mean, I mean, I gonna I mean, I mean, have to look this up and actually do a review for this. I mean, you should. <laughs> I definitely should, though. But thank you for your time, though, Scott. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, this is your series? Original characters from the fantasy comic over there, Makana Flux. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are you going to interview me? Is that how yeah. that work? Okay. Yes. Hello, everybody. This is Foggy, aka The Misses. Uh, Sean. Yep. Now, 
as I can see, like you have like a couple of series that you have going on at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, let's start off with um, your, between your latest or the beginning, which whatever you prefer. Um, what's, what is your series about? Well, I'll start with the, the fantasy series here. This is called Makana Flux. It's about three Earth kids. They fall into the world of Flux, meet a sword fighting princess, the last sorceress, and a nearsighted dragon. And together they've got to stop an evil living mecha before the whole world turns into metal. And I have the first three issues out, and the fourth just finished. And we're getting ready to get some printed copies of it. And then uh, it's going to be a six issue mini series. Nice. And then I have uh, prints of the characters from that series here as well. So basically, in a way, um, you say Mechanic Flux? Yes. Is it, it's pretty much more like a, how you put this, more like a sci fi kind of It seems. Yeah, it's a. Well, there are, yeah, because there are robots in there as well that they they have to fight against that are uh, trying to take over the, the planet and convert it into metal. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And what about the end? Uh, the, the end is, uh, uh, it's about, the world is ending in seven days, and each issue has two stories about how different characters react to the coming end of the world. Oh, and they're wow. all standalone, too, so you can read any in the series without having to read anything else based on the theme. So this is two stories of survival, and there's also madness, fantasies, hope, and romance stories. So if you only like nice. romance, you could just grab romance about the end of the world. So. Nice! Give it a good variety scrap body. Yeah, and I also have two other comics as well that I've worked on that are also here as well, like a diary and a satirical superhero comic. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And what is your inspiration with this? Um, well, I just started uh, drawing a web comic when I was in grad school because I had a lot of free time, and like, uh, and then just made a story that was bigger than the web comic and made it into this comic here, Displacement. And then after that, I was just like, I really wanted to start writing actual fiction and more stories and things like that. And so I started looking for artists and started doing more of that. Oh, wow. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I don't know. It's probably been at least seven years or so. Like, since I started doing cons, uh, probably seven, probably six or seven years. But even like a year and a half before that, I was like working on this comic with an artist before I actually printed it. And, Tried to go out and do stuff with it, things like that. Nice, nice. Because, uh, because as, as, as I can see, like the mechanic flex in the end, it's like it's like a two complete different, and it's yeah. and it's like it gives you the variety of it. So that's that's very good. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, of the series that you have so far, like like um, what what, is, uh, what do you think is going to be going in the near future? Um, well, right now. My, uh, my the end is done for now. Like I'm gonna try to compile it into a graphic novel as a Kickstarter in the future, um, and uh, and we'll see like if I ever get back to it to make another five because I always wanted to do ten issues of that. But right now I'm also focusing more on Macana Flux because it is I'm gonna make it. It's a web comic right now. You can read the first two issues for free at realmsofflux.com. But uh, right now it's just there as a, a preview. When I actually have the whole series completed, I'm going to restart it from page, issue one, page one, and just start updating weekly so that people can read eventually the whole series, but they'll be able to buy the physical comics early. And hopefully, and I also have a sequel for it and two other stories afterwards that all kind of are in the, the same universe but are standalone stories right. so that people could even read the sequel to Mechanoflux and not have to read the first one here eventually yeah. when I start. Because uh, I'm hoping to eventually have the webcomic and have enough material so that it will at least cover 15 years once I start it. Yeah, I can't wait to, to see it. Like, yeah. you know, hopefully one day we could just go ahead and read it part of the interview. Yeah. And, and basically, you know, if you want to ask uh, the audience where they can find you, um, yeah, you can find me online. I'm seanpmurphy.com. It's S-H-A-W-N-P-M-U-R-P-H-Y.com. That lists all the stuff I do, everything from my comics to internet videos and things like that. And then uh, the, web, the web comics at realmsofflux.com. And uh, that has the first two issues of Makana Flux currently. And you can uh, check there for when the web comic will eventually start in the next year, year and a half. 
Okay. 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 Uh, so Safe Sci-Fi um, was something I started about almost six years ago as of this coming August um, in the wake of like, you know, cancellation of Stargate Universe, uh, you know, Warehouse 13, Eureka, there was always Firefly, but Terra Nova, etc. All these sci-fi shows were being canceled everywhere. So uh, started as an advocacy group um, because I first got involved with Safe Stargate Universe, which is a movement on Facebook and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, I realized all these other shows were being canceled, and I said, hey, let's try to bring it all together, you know? Have some kind of group effort to help these shows. Obviously, can't do so much with only, you know, 5,000 people at a time, so right. we've evolved, uh, especially as things have gotten better. Um, so what we do now is we basically promote indie stuff, uh, or even professional stuff, but newer stuff. It's like uh, Nobility, for instance. It's um, a web series that we're hoping to get pitched to an actual uh, network here. It has some big names. It's got Walter Koenig from, uh, from Star Trek, the you know, original uh, Chekhov. It's got uh, Teal from Stargate. It's got Tori Higginson from, uh, so Elizabeth Weir from Stargate Atlantis. Uh, Cass Anvar from The Expanse. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I got a cameo uh, in it myself, actually, as a... You're in it. You're in it. Yeah, with, alongside Walter Koenig, the original Chekhov from Star Trek, which was phenomenal. <laughs> but um, it, it's a great project. We've been supporting it for years. What we've done now is we've decided to start branching out in our own stuff, starting with our anthology here, uh, Atlas to Time, Space, and Bonfires. Steven has been an amazing help with it. He, uh, he wrote one of the stories and he basically helped me put the whole thing together. Um, he, did, he and Tori here did most of the cover art inside. Christina did the cover on the outside. <laughs> and um, it's a, it contains 21 short stories. All of them... Uh, <laughs> All of them are uh, the original stories. <laughs> <laughs> kind of how to talk with a microphone. <laughs> all of them are original stories from uh, all, you know, variety of authors. They cover um, bizarre humor to sci-fi, of course, all of them science fiction. To time travel, to evolving bacteria, like this story here. Um, to uh, space series, space opera. Uh, one of them, the longest one in our book, is written by our Australian, our Australian counterpart, uh, David Bax. Um, what am I missing? There was, uh, there was one story about, <laughs> about a technician who was abducted by aliens to help them set up their entertainment system. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, there's <laughs> quite a wide variety. Um, Wait, so the, what, the aliens need cable? They want to watch TV, dude? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's great. Um, it's been a great group of people. I've, we've, I've loved working with them. Uh, we're going to be starting to plan our next anthology very soon. Um, it's available for free as an ebook. Uh, yeah, the links in the back of our cards are also go to our Facebook page. There's links there. Um, you know, we do. We only sell the print ones right now because it's the only one that costs money to make. You know. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we just want to get good science fiction out there to the fans for, you know, as cheaply as possible because that's what people deserve. They don't deserve 15 million streaming services specializing uh, in a different uh, franchise each one, you know? Oh yeah, Netflix, Hulu, PlayStation, and so on and so forth. Exactly. Everything should be all in one section. And now the new Stargate uh, web series is going to be on another paid subscription service. Oh uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it makes it, it makes it hard when you can't find sci-fi stuff and then you go to one site and they don't have what you want. You go to another one and just find it like, why can't I find it here? Why can't I even be in one area? Absolutely. Star Trek so, Discovery being on CBS is all access instead of on Netflix like the rest of the world. So, so, so where do you see this heading towards the people? Well, it's funny. We actually uh, were just talking about how we need to have speed of admins. So it's Steve, Stephen here is from Tennessee. I'm from Maryland. We've got David Bax in Australia and... Uh, uh, Rin Harsha in uh, Japan. So oh. we've been talking. We need to do a big, you know, a, you know, group call, or whatever, you know, to discuss the future. But what we plan is we plan to continue creating our own stuff. Um, 
I don't plan on shutting this down at all by any means. Uh, How's the Yeah, um, you know, anthologies and eventually to things like audio dramas. Uh, we want to do a, a narrated graphic novel at one point, um, and maybe eventually like actual, you know, uh, indie productions of our own, like you know, web series, maybe more. Who knows? I actually look forward to it, especially with the alien kid having someone just for entertaining system. I don't think I've laughed at haunt the entire day. <laughs> that is probably the most ridiculous, random, and yet funniest thing I've ever heard. You haven't seen the other story. Oh boy. There's I another can... one. Oh, I cannot uh, What was it called? It's uh, electrifying cornflake. Electrifying cornflake. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in the... That, it, that, hold on. It's, it's a little long and here it is. Oh. Electrifying You know what? It features the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> I think I'm done. <laughs> thank you, thank you for the interview. And um, we have a safe sci-fi state of feature. Mm -hmm. check, these guys, check these guys out later. And uh, let it. All right. Mark. And yours? Uh, Fallon. That's yeah. That's actually my nice. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Yep. Oh, 
Oh, I, I, I may actually have to bring some people to visit. Oh yeah, we've got more of our styles up there too. There's only a small selection. We have over 300 different designs. 300? Or close to. <laughs> oh, way more than I anticipated. And uh, you plan on expanding the source throughout the entire United States or just in some areas? Certain areas for the time being. Okay. Probably for the foreseeable future. And we're going to be upping our quality very soon. Ooh, I can't wait to see that. I cannot wait to see that. Well, thank you for your time, Bob. It was nice, it was nice seeing you work very much, and I cannot wait to see this in the future. Yes. Like I, like I had some ideas. Like, there you go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Foggy, aka This is Well, Angela McKendry. And basically, it's as far as you can see, it's more like her art. It's basically more of a like, propaganda type style. And I just say, like, you know, how, like, basically, how long you do this? Like, I've been doing shows for about five years. I've been a graphic designer for 25 years. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry to graphic designer, so that's why I was just so. <laughs> I started out doing keychains and promotional products for a company a long time ago. And, and I'm just, uh, just by looking at it, and I just figured, like, um, what, what give you the inspiration of doing those um, type of posters? I grew up, um, my dad's a big history fan, so in his, well, den back then, but man cave, he had a bunch of propaganda posters, and then my mom's a big trick, so it, I grew up kind of just, and combined the two, uh, this is what I was surrounded with. That's great, that's great. And it like some of them like it does represent of each, not only the character but the series as well. And to say like like how long does it you know process in terms of the posters? It normally takes anywhere between two days to a week because what I do is I sit down, I have an idea in my head, yeah. and I'll do that idea. And then I let it sit for a day, come back, and normally change everything. <laughs> and then just how many times I keep changing it. And right. Just, and then at some point I just go, okay, yeah, that's what I want, and I walk away. Oh, so. nice. And this is great. And everything just turned out well. And even though it's going to be short, but um, and my last question is saying. Like, what do you think is going to happen later in the future in terms of the crystal wise? As far as what I'll be doing? Yeah, yeah. Like, future wise, like, um, what do you think, like, um, this going to be later on in the future of your work? I have no idea. I constantly <laughs> like to keep doing new things. Um, if you asked me five years ago if I'd be doing conventions, I would have said, no idea. But like, yet here I am. Yeah. And it's just whatever comes my way of something. I do freelance work on the side, oh. so you know a lot of times people contact me about doing work, and I'll get involved in that for a couple of months oh. or just whatever. Did sometimes do they ask you for commissions? Or oh yeah, all the time. Oh. I do commissions all the time. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. In fact, some of these started out as commissions. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Alrighty. So, considering the fact we're going to have an audience, um, will you tell them like where they can find you? If you can find me on Deviant Art under Cuddles with Cats or Instagram under Cuddles with Cats Art or on Facebook as Cuddles with Cats. Hi, um, today has been a really good day. We're here with the Vic Coordinator and you also Joe. Joe yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're here the Vic Coordinator, uh, Joe here, and I uh, also have to lead the comics. Cool. Um, Argal, how do you think this event went today? It went well for us today. Um, this is, I know you guys go to our Middletown show. This is a smaller show for us. Um, it, it feels a bit bigger, but then again, the pipe is it's more closer. It's, it, yeah, so in that sense, yeah, everything's closer. I mean, it feels like it's a more crowded venue, but um, overall, you know, we have just the way the space works out. We can fit, um, we can only fit, you know, I think it's like 60, 60 vendors or so. This last Middletown show, like 100 vendors. So these vendors are smaller, and then, um, you know, just we get a little bit less, but uh, but we're, we've got the amount we want. I mean, we, this is the amount we want to get to fill it up. So. It, was, it was a really good show. Like, 
Compared to last year, because we didn't see it last year, we didn't really want to. But yeah. I really enjoyed myself this year because there was a lot of people stop, stopping by our table, looking at everything, and especially them going out doing the interviews, there were people coming back, and yeah. it, was, it was just a blast. Yeah, it was actually nice to go out and actually uh, meet some different people and actually get a chance to talk to them, get an understanding on what they're selling or what they're promoting and everything. And I don't know, I just think, and all the cosplays and even the cosplay show, which I did catch, but I did catch just for a little bit though. But everything seemed, it seemed like it, it went well today, even if it did rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got through a lot. I think I was wondering if that was going to keep you from the way. Luckily, it didn't start happen to the end. I don't know if it changed people's plans or not, but um, it was. We had the people kept coming in right to the very end, and the cosplay right. one of our peak. Only thing the rain did for me was make me lose track of time. <laughs> The only thing that for me is almost made me half sleepy, even though I'm already half dead. <laughs> but I don't know, I think I thank you for thank you for allowing us to come in and attend and yeah, thank sure, you for great. thank you for letting me uh go around and interview as many people as I did. Yeah, no, it's awesome. We, we, we appreciate yeah. the time. Cool, thanks for coming. We hope to see you again. Thanks for yeah, yeah, thank you for doing the show both years is great because you know, like you say you saw the first year, it's getting bigger and hopefully it just gets better every year. So I'm That's most likely to come back next year. Awesome. Bye, well too. Yeah. Cool, man. Thank you. Oh no! This is this this event went really well. It was smaller, but it was more condensed. I think it went really well today, though. Yeah, it went better than like Middletown when we was there last time. We got more yeah. interviews done. It was scheduled short, sweet, to point. It wasn't yeah. free. I wasn't freezing my tail off. That too. No, it would be too hot. But it is hot. We all hungry, sleepy. Yeah, so I'll, yeah, but no, I think it's about it for today, though. At yeah. least for this, at least for this, at least in the interview room. I'm starving. I've been working on an hour of sleep. I think, we, I think we're going to call it for today. Yeah, for you, you can call it for today. You still got to do a lot of stuff, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. That's it. I'm your boy Zito. No comments. We'll catch y'all next time.